What's up guys, Rick Denham here with Holy Moly Outdoors. It's pouring rain outside, so we're going to change gears and do this video in here as opposed to out in the boat. But, it is our first, finally, absolute pouring rain that we've had this fall. So, as a result, our rivers are punched out at the moment, but when they drop into shape, we are going to have a lot of fish ready to be biting. So, I'm really excited because today we're going to cover one of my favorite fisheries and that is tributary coho and it's specifically a drop of high water and what that's going to do so we're going to cover a couple techniques today that i love to do and uh, i'll show you guys how to be successful in these situations so let's get started first thing i love to do when these waters drop into shape and even if they're not punched out in general i'm always float fishing um, I love bait. I love the sight of that bobber down just like I did when I was five years old. There's nothing better. So float fishing is my first technique that I'm always running. Now I usually run one of two riggings. I'm either throwing my center pin rod setup and this is just your Okuma Raw, um, Okuma Raw 2. Really nice, basic I would say, center pin rigging on a Shimano 11.3 center pin rod and I got my favorite 20 gram clear drift float on there just a typical split shot rig very simple and then down to a 2 aught Gamagatsu hook bait loop style and then all I'm doing is just throwing a Nice glob of eggs, just like I have in here, all cured up, ready to go. Very simple. Maybe a quarter size um, glob of eggs, maybe a little bit more, half dollar. Just depends on where your flows are at and how you want to fish the run. But that's typically my main setup. But there is also um, another need if that rod being 11 foot 3 is a little bit too much for the area that you have it's kind of hard to back cast I drop it down in size and velocity I've been fishing this one a lot lately but velocity rods has this one it is their salmon river extreme series and it's the 8.6 model it's a 12 to 20 it's got a little bit more backbone to it but works great as a short quarters float rod so I use it for steelhead, I use it for salmon, really works well for a lot of that. And again, typical clear drift setup, this one's one of the newer uh, big water series in the 3 quarter ounce, and then I just got a 3 8 and a half ounce, sorry, that's a half ounce bait weight there, and then a couple split shot all the way down to my bait rig, just the same as I had on the other rod. So this one's a little bit tighter quarters for casting. Again, everything I should mention is spooled with braid and it makes it really easy to uh, mend your line and fight those fish in those tight quarters. So that's float fishing and that's generally the main thing I'm throwing. But if bait isn't really working or let's say that we got just not the ideal conditions, it's a little too fast to throw a float through, then I'm going to switch up to um, hardware. And I love, love those hardware takes. Because the sight of a bobber down is great, and that's one of my favorite things to look at. But when a coho just slams a spinner or a spoon, there's nothing better than that feeling. So, you've seen in some of my other videos, what I love to set up wise is the Wicked Lure. This is set up with a weight, this happens to be a half ounce Dave Tangle Free. You could use a cannonball, you could lose a lot of different things. But three feet a liter thereabouts to one of the king killer size coho killer, or sorry, wicked coho um, right there. Pink and chartreuse is one of my favorite colors because it stands out in that murkier water. This happens to be spooled up with 30 pound braid. Makes it really easy for this whole setup in case you happen to hook a monster king or something. You guys have the backbone and it makes it really easy. So that is my specific spinning rod that I'd be throwing, but I can't just say Wicked's alone because that's what I use primarily, but you can also be throwing other hardware spinners, like this one happens to be a uh, Olympic Tackle one, really a neat 
just like that one as well. They're really good custom ones, half ounce size. Blue Foxes, there's a lot of different ones out there. Spinners in general work really well for coho. You can also then throw spoons. Your typical river fishers like you would throw for steelhead or you got your clear drift ones as well. 3 8 and half ounce sizes. Chrome, chartreuse, 50-50, even copper or black. A lot of different colors work. All you're trying to do is get something flashy in their face. Generally when that water's on the drop, they are snappy and willing to bite. So it makes it really fun on that end. But we can't just stick with the flashy hardware because while spoons, spinners do work, there are also situations where you can get away with twitching. And that's become one of the more popular things recently. Um, and I've really enjoyed twitching up fish. It's a lot of fun. And uh, frankly, had a lot of success with it. So to showcase if I'm going to do twitching as a third option, it's not always the case on that higher water, but you never know. So generally I have three rods with me. So we'll go off topic for what I was going to say, and we'll talk about twitching a little bit. I run this one, happens to be the same 8.6 rod um, from Velocity, and I have it just spooled up with 12 pound mono at this point, but you can use braid, and I got one of my custom twitching jigs that I tie up. So, works really good as well, just to have something different. Sometimes they want the jig up and down twitching motion as opposed to a straight horizontal. So I always have those. And when you look into twitching jigs, you look at colors that vary. You know, you want something bright, you want something flashy. So you got a lot of different stuff like these custom ones that I'm tying here. Or you can go the route of something like an actual hoochie squid. And this one's a three and a half inch on a lead head. You can go bright colors. You can go dark colors for that stained water. Generally, the shadow uh, silhouette works really well. So something like this can be a good higher water on the drop color for coho. And I wouldn't be doing myself justice if I didn't mention plugs. Because off the bank, especially if you have more of the slower water, those coho can back out of that main current and sit right on the edge, rest up before they're jumping to the next hole. And plugs are really effective from the bank, especially in those deeper situations where you can flip that thing out there and just burn it through and get that coho's attention. Sometimes they may be sitting at the top of a run and you can just pitch these through and go. So a couple of my favorites that I like throwing are Brad's Wigglers. This happens to just be the flame orange. That's a very productive one, but there's hundreds of colors in the Wigglers. Or I'm gonna throw a Yakima Bait Fat Fish. Both of these are always in my box just to have. And if I'm off the bank, I got my sling pack on, I'm only gonna throw a handful of lures with me, but I'll throw probably two of these plugs like this just so I have them, because you never know when you may come across that plug ends up being the difference with that extra movement and sound that triggers a fish. So always worth having in your box. The fat fish will dive a little bit deeper than you will with the Brad's Wiggler. So just kind of have to play around with wherever you're at, but two very effective plug from different companies. This one, is one of my favorites along with good old boy which is just basically the reverse with the orange as well but coho love hardware so keep that in mind something else that I will make mention that's really important during these two periods of time is a good set of pliers um, and really having a plier set on you at all times can help you either get a fish um, quickly undone and back on to fishing real fast. You can also save yourself a lot of time having a good set of pliers when you're rigging up. So really guys, for this tributary coho fishing after high water, look for those fish to be sitting on the inside seams um, out of that main current. There's gonna be a lot coming now. This is the first big rain 
I know myself up here in the Northwest End, we are really happy to see this because right where I live is going to be full of fish. So really looking forward to this guys. I hope this helps you out on some tributary coho fishing. So good out there, good luck, and fish on!